Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last couple of years. They are still a relatively new addition to the Swedish beer scene, but I would say they've become very, very well respected and they're probably best known for their different kinds of New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs, but also for their fruity juicy modern nordic smoothie whatever we're going to call them sour beers but the beer we're going to have a look at today is a style that i know these guys can do very very well we've had many examples of this style from them before but it's also one of their latest releases through system we'll it here in sweden and it is supposed to be pretty damn nice so uh yeah needless to say i'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us hopefully it's another good beer Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So, uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again. Jutebori, as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Got to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in when we review the Gothenburg beers, because it is just channel tradition these days. But for this review then, we are going to return to the wonderful Duck Pond Brewing. So, this particular beer is called Sweeper. It comes in at 8% ABV, and this one is another New England hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So this beer was released as part of the local Osmoska League assortment through Systembolaget here in Sweden for November of 2022. And uh, yeah, as I said before, we've had many nice New England doubles from Duck Pond over the years. I always keep an eye on what these guys are releasing, but yeah, when it comes to that style, uh, Duck Pond are definitely one of the best breweries in Sweden at the moment. So keep an eye on them and see what they have. But yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see what this beer has in store for us. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Duck Pond Brewing before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is hugely, hugely appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography based tagging system if you go to the search bar type in your hometown city county state whatever um, the beers from that area should pop up if I've reviewed anything from there so check that out and remember you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries as well you'll find this one in the Swedish playlist along with many many others so uh, yeah let's go on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Duck Pond Brewing so, Duck Pond Brewing, as I've told you before, were originally known as Microphone Brigariat, or the Microphone Brewery in English, and this company is the brainchild of Nikola Sarsevitz, who is a singer and songwriter for the band Meal and Colin, which has been making music since 1993. So, the band was originally based in Örebro, out to the west of Stockholm, but they took a break, and at this point, Nikola moved over to Gothenburg on the west coast. But in 2013, he began home brewing with his friend Christian Silva, and this was during his time studying uh, international marketing in Hovda but the two were just brewing very very small 20 litre batches together they really enjoyed it and thought that they wanted to take this commercial so it was at this point that Nikola went down to Berlin in Germany for a two-week brewing course but the two then started the company together officially and it was based for a while in Nikola's house and at this point they were brewing 200 litre batches but they changed their name in the summer of 2019 and the main reason behind that was that they felt the name Microphone Brigeriet was uh, not really easy Easy for people abroad to spell and pronounce and all this sort of thing so they decided to go with something that was a little bit more English friendly so hence the name Duck Pond Brewing but since then they've been working to increase their output they have successfully increased their international sales over the last few years as well but that year in 2019 when they changed their name they produced around 70,000 litres it's also worth pointing out that Duck Pond Brewing are one of the co-owners of the Wizard Brewing brand along with Morian Doggins Brewery another Gothenburg based brewery who do some very very nice sour beers incidentally so check them out as well uh, but originally Duck Pond Brewing were brewing their beers at Popel's Brewery in Jönsered and Odd Island Brewing who are in Nondal to the south of the city but these days Duck Pond have their own premises in uh, Kungsten 
in Gothenburg and quite recently they hired Magnus Lorraine to come in as their new brewer. But they still brew a number of their beers at Odd Island and Mulndal, but yeah, quite a lot of the production is taking place at their own facility. Uh, as of November 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced about 65 different kinds of beer under the Duck Pond name. Before that, there were about 20 released under the Microphone Brigade name and uh, they will no doubt continue to increase that over the next wee while and of course as i say these guys are co-owners of the wizard brewing brand as well but um yeah that is all i can really tell you about duck pond brewing for the moment like i said these guys are best known for their new england hazies and also their kind of modern fruity sour beers so yeah if those are two style categories that catch your fancy this is one of the swedish breweries that i would highly recommend that you check out but um yeah that's everything we can say about these guys for the moment if you want to learn more about this brewery check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and of course you can check out the um the untapped page to learn more about all the different beers that they've done or you can check out some of my older reviews that we've done so um yeah that's everything to say about that just now let's get on and actually have a look at the beer itself so um, in terms of the beer, this one, as we said earlier, is called Sweeper. It comes in at 8% ABV, so this one is a New England hazy, imperial double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. This one contains oats and wheat, as well as the usual barley malt, and the hops in this beer are Brew One, Victoria's Secret and Citra, which we've all encountered before. Uh, Brew One, if I remember correctly, is about 12% alpha acid. It's American. It gives you a lot of pineapple. Victoria's Secret is also about 12% alpha acid. That one is Australian. That gives you a lot of kind of mango, passion fruit, and again, pineapple, and then Citra, we know very well. 14% alpha acid, American. Lots of mango. Good little bit of a, a new, you know, good little bit of a kind of lemon limey character when you put it into a New England hazy IPA. But um, yeah, as you can see, beautifully presented this one. I forget the name of the other beer that we had um, that had this kind of similar artwork to it. It was a D if I remember correctly, but the, the name's gone right out of my head uh, of that beer. That was like two months ago or something. But like I said, this was released as part of the local the Smoskovit for November 2022, and this can cost me 55 Swedish kroner. So that's about five euros 50, five pounds sterling, somewhere in the region of like six dollars American at today's exchange rates. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm very curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. I always look forward to duck pond time uh, during the month when we try these beers. So, this should be quite nice. I think we've got most of the beer out into the glass there. So let's just have a wee look at this. So, um, yeah. When you think that this one is a New England IPA, you can see it's poured pretty much as you would expect. So in terms of the head on this one, you can see that it's poured with about a half finger of a frothy, I would say a perfect white head. If I bring that up to the camera there, you can see a lovely kind of small foamy bubbles there, but one or two bigger ones as well. That is just going to fade away and give you a nice kind of thinner foamy layer as we go further and further into the beer. But colour wise, I have to say, this one does look really damn nice. It reminds me just of like a mango juice. I always like comparing the New England IPAs to different fruit juices, as you'll know if you watch the videos often. But uh, yeah, just that's just what the appearance reminds me of. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass with this one. A few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. But overall, it does look pretty damn nice. Um, so colour wise, as we said, a nice kind of bright yellow. Remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel agent they do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of the beer as well. But when it comes to New England IPAs, you don't often have to care about those two variables. But um, yeah, this one, in terms of its level of haziness, if I shine the light through this, it's actually one of the soupier and gloopier New England IPAs that I've come across in the last wee while. It's a bit hard to think what the other duck pond ones that we had in recent times were like but yeah the level of haze in this is pretty good actually um but not unsurprising when you consider that it's eight percent remember the haze in these beers it depends on the oak content wheat content and to a degree the yeast as well but uh, yeah needless to say this beer looks very very nice so let's take a wee look at the aroma of this one then and uh, and see what we have i'm very curious about this beer oh yeah 
that is pretty nice. Um, it's kind of what we'd expect from Duck Pond. As I say, you you can if you want a good New England IPA, you can rely on Duck Pond. They are pretty damn solid in my experience. Um, yeah, aroma wise, yeah, this is nice. Uh, you get a lovely, as I always say, there are six different ways a New England IPA can lean. Uh, so you've got the farmhouse yeasty character that you should think about, the rye leaning grainy side of things. Those are a bit more prominent in American brewed IPAs. Then you have the uh, barley malt bread, the wheaty bitiness, the oaty creaminess, and also the sweet side of the New England double IP as well. So these are the six things that you should think about when it comes to, uh, to this beer style. But yeah, the way that this beer goes together, I think, is pretty nice. So for me, this one's got a good little bit of oatiness to it. You also get the barley malt. You can smell the wheat. It's showing you a little bit of everything, this one. This beer is, I think, going to be quite a well-rounded New England IPA. So there's a little bit of everything going on in this. On the fruity side of things, yeah, it's quite tropical. It does have a wee bit of citrusy zest to it. And the green component is pretty nice too. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be pretty well-rounded. But let's break the aroma down a little bit more and describe it a wee bit more in depth and then we'll taste it because yeah, as I always say, aroma is half the experience when it comes to craft beers and whiskies and sakes and things like this. But yeah, aroma wise, this does smell pretty damn good, I have to say. So yeah, let's see. Um, in terms of the, um, yeah, in terms of the, the backbone of this beer then, it's, it's pretty much as you would expect. We've had this similar things from this beer style before. So the backbone of the beer is a lovely, fresh, white bready bread crust. This one almost smells as if you've got a little bit of flour left on the bread crust when it's just when it's been uh, put out into the supermarket. You know, it kind of smells like that. So a little bit of fresh white bread bread crust. On top of that, um, I get a little touch of a very slight wholemeal bready character to this one. Wholemeal brown bread. There's also a little bit of cracker to this one, you know, Jacob's cream cracker. But yeah, you do have some nice fresh white bread there as well. Um, and I think the white bread comes across as being quite wheaty. So you can smell the wheat. The wheat is sort of acting as a kind of smoothening agent uh, in this beer, I would say. So that is that is pretty interesting with this one. So lovely kind of smoothening uh, white bready character in this beer. At the back of the nose, you do get a tiny little touch of wheaty bitiness. But like I say, I think the influence that the wheat is having on this beer really is as a more smoothening effect rather than anything else. Um, in terms of the OT side of things, um, the OT side of this beer, I think, is, is quite interesting. So as I always say, oats are a good indicator of how fresh your New England IPA is. Um, so the creamier they are, uh, the fresher the beer is, the drier they are, the slightly older the beer is. But I do like how that um, I do like how all of that goes together in this particular beer. So yeah, the OT side of things in this one is really nice because you do get a big bit of that creamy character to it. There's a little bit of dryness in there, and um, yeah, that you get a little bit of it. The oats are actually quite creamy and quite thick in this one but you're also getting a little bit of that typical kind of Werther's original butter candy butterscotchy type note to this beer it's not madly sweet but you do get a little bit of that out of this one and there's something very familiar about this aroma that makes me think a uh, golden promise is in this um you know i know the apex brewing who are one of the um one of the very well-known Swedish brewers as well. They love to use a bit of Golden Promise in their beers. And there's just something about this one reminds me of that. So a little bit of Biscuit, a little bit of Werther's Original. Um, yeah. I think it goes together really, really nicely. Um, yeah. Gets a thumbs up from me. Absolutely. Yeah. I do like that with this. Um, I do like that with this one. The, the malty side of this beer is really quite nice. They've done nothing we haven't seen before. I will say that but it does go together really nicely. Uh, the hoppy side of this beer then, aroma-wise, let's look at the hoppy side of things. Yeah, um, you do get a little touch of earthiness out of this one, but the green component for me is more of a kind of bright floral character, and you've also got the grassiness in there as well. So it's actually quite oily, this one. I do like how that, um, I do like how that goes together in this beer. So yeah, nice little bit of floral character, a little bit of a kind of grassy, zesty sort of thing. Um, yeah. Aroma wise, I think this beer does go together really, um, really quite nicely. Um, 
yeah, aroma wise, I, again, I like how this this beer does that. So remember, um, there are three different types of hopping when it comes to brewing your beer. You've got early addition hopping, which uh, is in the first hour of your wort boil. That gives you mainly bitterness. Uh, you've got late addition hopping, which is within the last half hour of your wort boil. It gives you a little bit of bitterness, but mainly uh, flavour and aroma. Then you've got dry hopping, which gives you, is, is after the wort boil, and it gives you mainly... Um, yeah, that gives you mainly... Um, you know, it gives you pretty much all flavour and aroma. New England IPs tend to rely on the latter two. Sometimes they've got a little bit of early edition hopping. Um, West Coast IPs use all three, and that's why they have those bigger, deep, dank characteristics. So with this beer, you can tell that it's mainly relying on late edition and dry hopping because you do have a you've got quite a bright floral character, also a nice little bit of zesty, grassy character in there. If there was early edition hopping, it would be a lot deeper and a lot more dank, if you like. So I do like how that pieces together in this one. In terms of the fruity side of things in this beer, um, I would say this one is very, very tropical. You get that right away with this. So on the nose, you've got a good little bit of, um, you've got a good little bit of passion fruit in there. You've also got a good little bit of, um, so yeah, good little bit of passion fruit. You've also got a little bit of the, um, of mango as well like lots of quite juicy and quite bright mango that's going to come from the citra and it will also come from the victoria secret in this one the passion fruit will come from both of those too but there's a lot of pineapple in this and victoria secret and brew one are going to give you that of course but underneath that there's a little bit of a slightly i get a bit of it's got a mix of lime and lime but i think it leans a little bit more towards a limey type aroma to be honest with you and that's going to be the citra that gives you that so yeah for me lots of mango lots of pineapple in this one those are the two most dominant fruits but there is a wee bit of pineapple in there and there's also just a wee bit of um yeah a wee bit of pineapple oh, well quite a bit of pineapple i should say but also a bit of a kind of lemon limey note to this one uh, aroma wise this is pretty nice and the more that i smell of it i start to get a little bit more of the limey character i mean the lime in this one is such that if i didn't know what hops were in here i would probably guess that it was um i'd probably guess that there was a good little bit of um motueka or maybe even equinot in this one but as I always say take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of these beers before you get stuck into them but we are going to try this one now and see what we have so yeah this one is the sweeper a new england hazy imperial double whatever you want to call it ipa from duck pond brewing in gothenburg utabori up on the swedish west coast slanja skull cheers oh yeah that's pretty damn nice, I have to say. Um, yeah, um, I wouldn't expect anything less from Duck Pond. Just a solid, solid New England double IPA, this one. Uh, first impression of it is nice and, you know, it's got a nice big kind of creaminess to it. Good little bit of sweetness as well. And um, yeah, the way this beer goes together, it's, it's, it's everything you'd expect from Duck Pond Brew. And it's quite hard to get blown away by this style these days. But, you know, it delivers with everything you would kind of want. It's a very tropical-leaning IPA, good little bit of floral character, a wee bit more floral than I thought it was going to be on the basis of the aroma. But, um, yeah, this is, again, just another very, very solid beer from Duck Pond. We wouldn't expect anything less from them, to, to be quite honest. So, um, yeah, let's break this beer down then and describe it for you as, as we usually do. So, yeah, middle third of your palate then, you can feel uh, backbone of this beer, you absolutely get a little bit of that kind of fresh, white bready bread crust in this one. Goes together really nicely. So, um, yeah, a little bit of fresh, white bready bread crust in this beer, as I mentioned. Um, it goes, yeah, it goes together really, really well. Um, yeah, a bit more grainy, but I think it works. Toward the front of that middle third of your palate, you might get just a little touch of a more kind of woody 
character out of the beer. And then on top of that, there's a little bit more of a kind of Jacob's cream cracker type thing coming out of this one. So I do like how that goes together. Um, but yeah, this one, there isn't too much in the way of crackery note to this one. It's just in the beginning when you get the bread crust, the cracker, but then above all of that, you start to get that you can feel that the white bread from the barley malt in there although in fairness i do actually get a little touch of wholemeal brown bread in there it's it's very layered the base of this beer so as i say more grainy bread crust a little bit of uh yeah more grainy bread crust a little bit of a more kind of um jacob's cream crackery sort of thing wholemeal brown bread then you've got the kind of white bread on top of that you can feel that above all of that there's a little bit of a more um there's a little bit of a kind of more dense, wheaty, white bready layer. Um, so yeah, I like how, I do like how that goes together for sure. So yeah, the wheat in this one's quite interesting. As I was picking up in the aroma, I was expecting that the wheat would be quite... Um, you know, more of a kind of smoothening and thickening agent, and it does that for sure. Uh, but it's interesting, when you first take the beer in, and you can feel that on top of the white bready layer, as I say, you feel that just denser, wheaty layer, then it does have a wee bit of bitiness to it, which is, is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, there is a good little bit of a wheaty... Yeah, you do have a little bit of that kind of wheaty bitiness within that middle third of your palate there, which is quite interesting. So yeah, smoothness from the wheat underneath and a little bit of bitiness on top. And of course, the bitiness does build the further back on the palate you go. Um, as I've always said, you know, um, more bitey and, you know, more kind of grainy and dry, bitter flavours come out further back on the palate. The sweeter flavours come out further forward. So yeah, um, above that, you know, beyond that, you get that nice smooth wheaty layer. You have got a little bit of that kind of bitiness to it, but you've also got, you do also have that little bit of, um, you do also have that nice kind of oaty character uh, sitting on top of it there. So yeah, lovely kind of oaty, um, yeah, lovely kind of oaty creamy notes there. And as I've always said, you know, oats are an indicator of how old your beer is. The creamier they are, the um the newer the younger your beer is the drier they are the older the beer is but the oats sit on top of that wheaty layer and it's kind of interesting with this one because down the middle line of your palate you do actually you get a little bit of that kind of more creamy oaty note but as you move out further toward the edges of that middle third of your palate you get a few more um you do get a little bit more of the kind of dry character in there so yeah way this beer goes together i think is is really really nice But yeah, um, it, is, it is, as I say, really, really quite nice. Um, yeah, I think on top of the oaty layer, you do get a little touch of sweetness. Like in the dead centre of your palate, you can feel there's a wee bit of that Werther's Original butter candy, butterscotchy type thing. But the sweetness takes a wee bit of time to build, actually. Um, so you can feel a little bit of that there. But as you move further away from that centre of your palate, you can feel there's almost like a little bit of... McVitie's digestive biscuity character. It just gets a little bit more biscuity and grainy the further um, away from the centre of your palate that you get. So yeah, way that that goes together is nice. So a big thumbs up from me. Um, um, so yeah, the way that the this beer goes together in the middle third of the palate is quite nice and the more that I drink of it the more kind of creamy and oaty it gets but you can feel the wheat is really thickening everything out in this one as I say we've had this sort of beer from Duck Pond before but I, I do think it's very very nice this one is a bit more tropical I think than some of the other ones that we, we've had from them previously but as I say, you know when you go to Duck Pond you expect a solid New England IPA they've delivered with this once again you can't complain um, so yeah, let's look at the back third of the palate then. The border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that bready build up there. The base of the back third of your palate, yeah, a little bit more of a kind of grainy, uh, bread crusty sort of thing. 
above that you start to get more of a yeah above that you start to get more of a kind of eerie uh yeah sorry brain's not working you get a little bit of the grainy bread crust you get the jacobs cream cracker again so and those both feel a little bit more grainy a little bit more dry you've got the wholemeal brown bready layer which feels a little bit taller and again a bit more grainy then you've got the white bready layer which is a bit taller and slightly more airy and things as well so i do like how that um, how that goes together in this one um so yeah the bready layers on the back third of the palate, they're the same but a bit more tall, a bit more airy and things, but then above um, that white bready layer that I mentioned, you do start to get, you can feel in the border region, you get a little bit more bitiness from the wheat and it really does sit there above everything else on that back third of the palate. So yeah, you start to get more wheaty bitiness there, but above all of that, you're starting to get some of the, uh, yeah, you do start to get a little bit of the kind of more yeasty, eerie esters coming out of this beer so i do like how that goes together absolutely so a little bit more eerie uh estery bready kind of farmhousey type thing to this beer so for me it's more you know you've got a little bit of that very light airy bread it's got a little touch of an almost honeycomb type flavor to it then just a wee bit of a kind of peppery it's got a little bit of an almost peppery kind of seedy type note to it uh, which is quite interesting. So that's sitting above the kind of wheaty bitey layer on that back third of the palate. But yeah, you can feel the back third of your palate, the flavour is definitely taller. And then as you come further forward into the middle third of the palate, it just kind of squashes down that little bit more. One other thing I'm noticing about this beer is that I'm getting more and more bitterness out of it the more that I drink of it. So we can focus on the green component now. Uh, back corners of the palate, there is a little touch of earthiness there. But as you move further forward along the sides of your palate with this beer, it actually does have quite a bit of a, a dank, floral and slightly piney character to it. So it's, it's really interesting how that pieces together in this beer. Um, yeah, I really do think that that's, it's quite interesting with that beer. I really got, I can feel it gets more and more bitter the more that I drink of it. So yeah, nice big kind of floral character to the beer. I think it works really well. Um, Yeah, a little bit of earthiness there. Nice big deep floral aromaticity. It actually gets a bit dank. You could even say there's a bit of pine resin in there. But remember, all of these hops are high alpha acid. If you use them as early edition hops, they um they will give you this kind of big bitterness. So it's not surprising. But yeah, a little bit of spicy floral note there on the front corners of the palate. Then round the front curve of the tongue, a wee bit lighter and more grassy again. But actually quite zesty in that particular regard. So that's quite interesting with this uh, with this beer for sure. So yeah, the green component really builds in this one, I think, the further uh, that you go into it and the more that you drink of the beer. But let's focus on the front third of your palate and the kind of fruity side of things then. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that bready buildup out of the beer. So yeah, kind of soft white bready notes. The base of that front third of your palate is a little bit more kind of smooth and, and yeah, white bread. You do get a little bit of the oatiness in there as well, but above all of that, you've got that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just kind of roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, that again goes together pretty damn well actually. Um, but yeah, back of the front third of your palate, you've got a bit of that stronger kind of grapefruity and passion fruit. You know, I'm guessing that's most likely to come from the citra. But as you move further forward, you get a slightly, you still get that quite pungent passion fruit. But if you keep moving forward from that, the beer kind of mellows out and gives you a more kind of juicy mangoey quality. And that's going to be the, again, that's going to be the Citra and the Victoria's Secret that's going to give you that in this beer, or Vic Secret. Um, but yeah, lovely big juicy bright mango characters out of this beer. So yeah, lovely big kind of ma juicy mangoey qualities coming from it. It goes together really nicely in that regard. As you reach the middle of that, um, as you reach the middle of that front third of your palate, though, you've got more of a you've got a big pineapple note out of this one. But you can feel the pineapple kind of spreads into the front half of the front third of your palate, and you can feel the base of that um, the base of that front third of your palate is more kind of um yeah it's more 
sort of you do get more of a you get quite a bit of lemon limey zesty character out of this which is interesting so the citra i do wonder i'd love to know the ratio of the hops in this beer when they've done it because you do get that lemony zesty character and it actually builds a good bridge with the kind of dankness that this beer develops too so i think i've got a feeling the citra might have been used as the the hop in the whirlpool with this one because yeah you do get a bit more of that kind of lemon limey zesty sort of thing in the dankness actually uh, but yeah, you can feel the pineapple sort of spreading forward. But I, I really do like how this beer goes together. So it gets it gets a big, big thumbs up from me. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. But this is definitely a more kind of bitter example of a New England IPA compared to, uh, to some of the other ones that I've had in recent times, actually. So thumbs up to Duck Pond for doing something a wee bit different with this. I don't remember the last beer that we had from them being uh, kind of quite like this. But yeah, let's round off this review then with the, the mouthfeel. Um, so yeah, for me, mouthfeel of this beer, top end of mid-bodied, carbonation is very smooth. It does have a little bit of cleanliness to it. You know, it has that kind of clean Nordic feel, but you still get a wee bit of the creaminess out of this beer. As we said earlier, this one is a little bit more bitter. I wouldn't be surprised if this is like 50 IBUs or something like that. It does feel it's it's got to be forty or fifty IBUs. You kind of expect that with the double IP. They you know quite often put a little bit more bitterness in these to kind of balance out the malt and things. But yeah, this has got. I think this is about fifty IBUs. Always take my IBU counts though with a bit of a pinch of salt. My weakest point of beer reviewing. But yeah, I think this is about fifty IBUs. The malt base, as we said, a little bit of graininess, quite a bit of smoothness, a little touch of sweetness, gives you everything you want from the style. And the fruity character, as we've said, really is very tropical leaning. It's got a little bit of oily character to it. But um, yeah, I really do like how this one uh, goes together, actually. So it gets a big, big thumbs up from me. Um, yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about the um, about this particular beer. But another very, very solid New England double IPA from Duck Pond Brewing. You can't knock this, but certainly one of the more bitter beers that I remember having had from these guys in this style category over the last wee while. As I always say, I would love to see what these guys would do with a, an old school West Coast IPA, uh, but they haven't produced that yet, of course. But yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. This was the Sweeper, an 8% New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA from Duck Pond Brewing in Gothenburg. Once again, solid, solid beer from these guys. So um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Duck Pond Brewing as well. And we will see about returning to these guys at some point in the very near future. But until the next time, slander just now, check out my social media, check out Duck Pond social media, and I'll catch you guys with another review very shortly. Slander, skull, cheers.